Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get out your King James Bibles. Follow along, please. And uh, you will notice that uh, people who tell you the King James Bible is no good are always pro-Zionist. And uh, if you noticed in the Bible, it wasn't Rome that wanted Jesus dead. Now, it was the other group said, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Yeah, that group. Uh, another thing, too, this is part two of the Lord's Prayer, Thy Kingdom Come. Now, where did we... Uh, Let's see, let's read that. Matthew 6, and verse 9, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Now, this is Jesus speaking. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Verse 10, Thy kingdom come. Whose kingdom? The Father in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So, let's take a look at Thy Kingdom Come. And no, we're not talking about the rock group. But, um, just a little update here. I got another strike on YouTube. And, so I can't post nothing for two weeks on YouTube. And it wasn't even a new video. This video had been out for years uh, that they gave me the strike on. It was the white genocide in Bible prophecy. Evidently, that is hate speech. I don't even know what I said that's hate speech, but I guess warning whites that they're about to be exterminated from the face of the earth, almost, is hate. Because they hate for you to know the truth. So, this is my second strike in a while, so if I get another one, I don't know, three months or whatever, I, they're going to totally delete my channel. And I've made a, a, I've made a agreement with the Lord that I will stay on the internet teaching the Bible as I know it until YouTube removes my channel. After that, it's over. I will probably leave. I might do an update here and there, but I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, how can you, a video be up for years, and then all of a sudden you say, oh, that's hate speech, you got a hit, so. All right, so let's take a look at Thy Kingdom Come. Now, there was a time before the fall of Adam and Eve and Satan, Lucifer, the devil, whatever you want to call him, that things were great in heaven and they were great in earth. Both. So, let's take a look. And we're going to cover the fall in heaven again. We'll cover it for a few minutes. Just so that somebody that hasn't... Um, Listen to the previous studies, has an idea of what's going on. So let's get let's get going. All right, let's go to the book of Genesis. Uh, you know, it's interesting. The name Genesis. When you look at the first four letters, it's G E N E, gene, as in genetics, as in DNA. I mean, the Bible is the book of Adam, and Adam is a racial description. And there's only one group of people on the face of the earth that have carried the Bible, translated it into different languages, and built the churches. Yeah, I know white people go to different places and try to teach the heathens all this about 
Jesus, but uh, there was a group of missionaries. They went to Africa and they brought some building materials. They built a small church to a village and they taught them about Jesus and they were bringing food and everything. And then, you know, um, and then the, the villagers were acting, oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, we love Jesus, jumping up and down and singing the songs in the church. And, you know, they were getting fed every day. And then the missionaries, you know, said, well, you know, it's time. We got to go back home. So they go back home. And then after, I don't know, a period of, I don't know, a couple of years, maybe, they went back to see how the church was doing. Well, guess what? They had dismantled the church, taken the building materials and repurposed them for their house or whatever, houses or whatever. And there was no, there was no services. So, you know, you feed the heathens and guess what? They're going to say whatever you want them to say so that they get fed every day. And that even happened with Jesus. All right, let's go to John chapter 6 before we get started with the, well, this is part of the study too. Verse 1. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Tiberias was a Caesar, a king of Rome, and they named this body of water after him. Verse 2, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. So some people are looking for a magic show. Others, because, you know, they want to get healthy. They want to get well. And Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. It was near. When Jesus was lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove or to test them, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. Now, a penny back in these days was a day's wage for an unskilled laborer. So 200 penny worth is, I mean, that's 200 days wages for somebody. That's going to be a lot of bread. So, you know, you're talking a lot of people. Verse 8, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. 5,000 men. Now you figure there's Got to be probably close to that many women, if not more, and children. So how many people are here? 10, 12, 15,000? I don't know. Verse 11. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were down, set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled... Five loaves of bread and two fishes, and they were filled. He said unto the disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. So here it is not only did everybody eaten, they were stuffed. They couldn't even finish it all. 13. Therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets. 12. One for each tribe of Israel, right? Didn't Jesus say he was the bread of life? Do you see the symbolism here? I do. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves 
And by the way, um, Bible scholars who know the Bible a lot better than I do uh, will tell you that the number five means uh, is a number for grace. G-R-A-C-E. Uh, so they filled five, 12 baskets with the rem, uh, fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and over, I'm sorry, over and above unto them that had eaten. Now remember, Passover, this is early in the year. This is like March, April. This is not, um, they're just coming out of uh, winter time. So it's early spring. Matter of fact, Passover was the beginning of the year, according to the uh, Bible. And why barley loaves? Well, barley would ripen and was ready to harvest before wheat. So that's why people would plant barley and then they would plant wheat. And the barley would always be... Uh, harvested first. So that's why they had har uh, barley loaves. Barley is not a big thing in America because, um, well, I prefer the taste of wheat and so do most people. I've eaten barley. It's all right, but uh, perhaps you've had beef barley soup. I don't know. Verse 14. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that, uh, that should come into the world. When, there, uh, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. Now, here it is. They want to take Jesus and make him a king. But Jesus uh, didn't, it, it's not time. So he's, he went into the mountains alone. See, there's going to be a day when Christ is a king on this earth. Well, maybe not this earth, but uh, the new earth. Because this one's polluted with blood. But uh, his time is not yet. 16. And when even, evening, was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea, and entered into a ship, and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. And when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea, and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. And he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Now I wonder, are they in the middle of this body of water, and then all of a sudden Jesus walks to them, gets in the ship, and then all of a sudden, boom, they're at land? I, that's kind of how I see it, but... The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there save the one wherein to his disciples had entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone, howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples they also took shipping and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. So here it is, his disciples leaving the boat alone. Jesus is not with them. And then all of a sudden the boat arrives and they're all together. And these people are like wondering, wait a minute, how did Jesus get there? And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Yeah, you're following me because you want food. Not because of the miracles and my teachings. 
you are following me because you want to eat free food just like that African village verse 27 labor not for the meat which perisheth but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the son of man shall give unto you for him hath god the father sealed then said they unto him what shall we do that we might work the works of god jesus answered and said unto them this is the work of god that you believe on him whom he hath sent They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? That uh, What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world then said they unto him Lord evermore give us this bread Jesus said unto them I am I am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. See, the Father has to give you to Christ. Think about it. 37, all that the Father giveth, John chapter 6, verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he, the Father, all that he which hath given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. What's the last day? That's when the last day of this earth being ruled by the power of Satan. Verse 41. The Jews... Isn't it always the same crew? Oh, yeah. The Jews then murdered at, murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man, no man, no woman, no child, no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets that they shall all, uh, all, they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Do you believe on Christ? I do. Verse 48, Jesus says, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. What? 
Is this cannibalism? No, it's symbolism, people. I'll leave uh, cannibalism for those uh, African descendants in Haiti. Yeah, do you know they're in Haiti? They're rioting and destroying and looting and des destruction, and they're killing and eating their victims. Of course, you know, Heron. Haiti is, the island of Hispaniola consists of Haiti on one side and the Dominican Republic on the other side. And when you fly over the island and you look at the Dominican Republic, it's green and trees and grass and beautiful buildings and everything else. And then you fly over to the Haiti side, it's barren. All the trees have been cut down and burned for, for wood for fires and they didn't replant nothing. You know, that's the difference between, you know, the Dominicans cut down trees and use it for fire too. But when you burn, when you cut down a tree, you plant five or 10 more. Haiti didn't do that. I mean, after all, it, you know, it's work to put a hole in the ground and put a seed in it and then water it every day until it takes, you know. No, we can't do that. Haiti's barren. They're always on the verge of starvation. So if you want to eat, you got to kill your neighbor and eat him. Uh, and I'm not joking. I mean, let's face it. Africa is the only nation in the world that practices cannibalism as a thing. I mean, you know, other, other races have done it, but only like the emergency survival type situations. Uh, the Donner, D-O-N-N-E-R party in California. Um, there was a plane crash in the Andes Mountains in the 70s, early 70s. Um, uh, and yeah. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, you know, about 20 or so years ago, maybe a little longer, um, people were, young people were getting into, they were interested in vampires. And I made a vampire type website. It was black background and was talking about blood and this and that and the other and eternal life through blood. And this is the chapter that I used. Of course, I didn't tell him it was Jesus until the very end. And it got, oh, hundreds of thousands of views. I mean, it was, I spent a lot of time promoting that site and putting up links and every vampire site I could find, I would post a link and it had over a quarter million views. And then one day Google delisted my site. Yeah, totally gone. Unless you typed in the exact web address, it would not come up in the listings. I was always in the top five for a vampire or vampires. I was getting so many I was getting a um, hundred emails a day. I couldn't even answer them all. I couldn't do it. People were asking me about, oh, how do I get eternal life? Well, duh, didn't you read the, the what I wrote on the site, you know? I hope somebody found their way to the Lord, but I don't know. But I've known about the um, censorship for over 20 years now, but now it's apparent to everybody, so pretty much. All right, 53, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, 
ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue, as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore many of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? In other words, man, this is a difficult to understand teaching. Who can understand this? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth, Does this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? Now remember in Acts, the book of Acts, Jesus went up into heaven in a cloud. So that's what is referring to here. But it hasn't happened yet. What an if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend, going up, ascend up where he was before. See, Jesus was in heaven, but he came down to the earth to restore what was lost at the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned and fell. Keep that in mind. Verse 63. It is the Spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. You know, it, our flesh is of no use almost. It is the spirit within us that is, quickens us, makes, you know, makes you, brings you, makes you to the kingdom, your faith in Christ, right? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words of Christ are spirit and eternal life 64 but there are some of you that believe not for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him mm. and he said therefore said I unto you that no man can come to me except it were given unto him of my father see if the father doesn't give you to Christ, you're not going to come to Christ. And there are people that call themselves free will, and they believe that no matter who you are, as long as you want to will your way to Christ, you're going to be saved. And then they teach, if you believe in election and God making a choice, well, they'll call you a Calvinist after John Calvin, who believed in election. When I read this kind of stuff, I mean, it's pretty clear that, you know, John Calvin didn't invent election. God did. No man can come unto me. No man can come to Christ, except it were given unto him of my Father. If God doesn't call you, if God the Father doesn't call you, you will not come to Christ. And there's people that find that offensive. But, whatever. Listen to this. I love this. This is, this is interesting. This is why I believe the numbers, chapters and numbers and verse numbers in the Bible are divinely inspired. We're in John chapter 6, verse 66. John 6, 6-6. Six, six. 666, anyone? Let's read that verse. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Whoa. John 666. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. They walked away from Jesus. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? 
thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you, tw you twelve? Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. All right, let's go to Matthew 26. Um, not only are we learning about the kingdom, but we're learning how to how people get into the kingdom. I, this is going to be a two-part, well, thy kingdom come. This is going to have to be at least two parts. I mean, I've barely started going, and here it is, we're 30 minutes already. So this is, this kingdom study is probably going to be at least two hours. Maybe, might even be a third part. I don't know. You know, when I start doing these, I have a general idea of what I'm, where I'm trying to go with it. But, uh, whew, this is a lot. All right. Um, now, those of you that don't know it, now, if you've never read the entire Bible, starting in Genesis, you should. I mean, uh, Genesis, not only is genetics, you know, G-E-N-E, -E, but have you ever heard of a generator, G-E-N-E-R-A-T-O-R, -E -E uh, creates electricity? You know, it generates electricity, right? Um, beginning creation but in the book of exodus when israel was in captivity in egypt um, they had the first passover where they sacrificed the lamb and they put the blood on the doorposts so that the angel of death would pass over them and not kill the firstborn but they had a what they call the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The bread of life without leaven. And leaven is, you know, like yeast. Um, yeast has, from what I understand, yeast has two purposes. One, it causes bread to rise because it, uh, carbon dioxide, or or as it takes carbon dioxide and creates oxygen. Oh, wait a minute. It's a type of plant, I think. I don't know. It produces a, a gas as a byproduct and it causes the bread to rise. It fills, it blows it up like a balloon. But then there's the other, there's brewer's yeast, which takes uh, sugar and converts it into alcohol. So basically, alcohol is the waste product of the yeast. And there's more than one type of alcohol, but I'm talking about the type of alcohol that people drink, not wood alcohol. That's that's poison. So that's what they make wine out of. Okay, is brewer's yeast and beer. And when they distill it down and concentrate it, they make it into whiskey or what have you, or vodka or whatever your poison is. So, Matthew 26, verse 17. So, right after Passover, they got the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And leaven is always a type of sin in the Bible. It's always a type of sin. So, here it is. The symbolism is, you want to eat the bread of life free of sin. That's why it was unleavened bread. And what you do to make unleavened bread, you just take wheat, you beat it up, uh, grind it, mix it with water, whatever else you're going to put it in, and then just fry it on, like in a pan or bake it. And uh, sort of like pita bread or crackers. Crackers are uh, unleavened bread, generally. Some of them. It's a symbolism, people. So, All right, so let's go to Matthew 26, 17. 
Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying in the hymn, Where wilt thou that we prepare to eat, uh, prepare for thee to eat of the Passover? And he said, Jesus, go into the city to such a man and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth, as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would, uh, it had been good for that man if he had not been born. You know, there's people who tell me that Judas Iscariot is saved. I mean, really? If he was saved, why would it be good if he'd never been born? Huh? Huh? Can somebody explain that to me who has greater Bible knowledge than I do? And, and I don't claim to be a scholar by no stretch of the imagination. But, uh, but when he says, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Woe. Being in the kingdom of heaven is not a woe. Then Jesus, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said, yeah, if you say so. 26, Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, bread, and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. So when Jesus in John chapter 6 was talking about eating his body, flesh and drinking his blood. Are you getting the idea now? Jesus took bread and said, Take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this, the wine. Now remember, what was the first miracle in Capernaum that Jesus did at the wedding? First miracle recorded in the Bible. He turned the water into wine. Remember? Oh, yeah. Symbolism, people. The Bible is full of symbolism. You know, people read the book of Revelation and they say, oh, I can't understand it. Um, have you ever read the rest of the Bible? Have you ever read from Genesis all the way to uh, the book of Jude? I think, I think it's Jude. I think Jude's the... Um, I can't remember. The book before Revelation. Yeah, Jude. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's Jude. Genesis to Jude, and then Revelation. I mean, Je Revelation's full of symbolism, and it draws its symbolism from the rest of the Bible. If you've never read the entire Bible, you know, how can you read the last chapter of any book, of a novel, you know, a story? You read the last chapter and you're like, this don't make any sense. Well, duh, you didn't read the beginning. You don't know who the players are or what the storyline was. But, all right, so, take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament. The wine, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the whole world? No. Which is shed for many, for the remission of sins. Why didn't he say, which is shed for everyone in the whole world? Because it isn't for the whole world. It's for many. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine 
until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Do you know that uh, the grapevine was uh, symbolic of Israel? The fig tree was symbolic of Judah. So, Jesus is not going to drink this wine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung in him, they went out unto the Mount of Olives. Yeah, this is going to be a multi-part study. No problem. Wow, I haven't even hardly touched. I haven't even started on the kingdom. Hardly. All right. Um, let's go to John 19. We're going to see about the crucifixion of Christ. All right, so the... Pharisees, the priests, the high priests, and the Pharisees took Jesus and tried him under their law and condemned him to death. But being that they are under the domination of Rome, they are going to deliver him to Pilate, the Roman governor, and convince him to put Christ to death. And, of course, you listen to your demon nominational church world, they'll tell you, oh, yeah, Pilate, Pilate killed Jesus. Um, I don't think so. So let's go to John 9, 19, verse 1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. So his king... His king thor um, crown, they crowned him as a king with thorns. Whoa. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 real quick. Now, Adam and Eve had just fallen in sin. And in verse 17, And unto Adam, he, God, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. The ground's cursed. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You know, before, he would just keep the garden. You know, the trees would grow like crazy, and you'd have to cut them back and prune them and, you know... You're just maintaining, you know? But now the ground is cursed. And in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Verse 18. Listen to this. Thorns and thistles. I'm sorry. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. What is one of the curses of the ground? Thorns. You ever been a you ever been pricked with a thorn bush? I have. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Hmm. Wow. All right, let's go back to John. Chap, uh, 19, verse 2. And the soldiers put a crown of thorns on and put it on his head, right? And they put on him a purple robe. Purple was the color of royalty. There were times in the past and kingdoms that if a commoner was caught wearing purple, they would be put to death. And the soldiers said, uh, verse 3, And the soldiers and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. So they're mocking him. They put a, a crown of thorns. Why thorns? Because the earth had fallen. And 
They're mocking him, right? Verse 4. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Pilate's like, I see nothing wrong with this guy. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests, now remember, these are not Catholic priests. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews, you know, the Bible tells you who's behind all this, right? The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. Now, I know I've mentioned this in the past, but, you know, for new listeners, I'll cover it again. Pilate was the governor of Judea. Well, Galilee, or Judea. Well, Jerusalem. And, you know, Jesus was drawing crowds of thousands and thousands of people. You better believe Pilate had sent spies undercover to listen and report on what Jesus is saying. Because he doesn't want a revolutionary saying, hey, we need to overthrow Rome and, you know, fight against these people. No. No. Doesn't, Pilate doesn't want that. So he would have sent spies to listen to the words of Jesus and report back to him. Because he doesn't want an insurrection. But, you know, all the spies would be saying, uh, this guy is talking about the kingdom of God and uh, performing miracles and doing all these things. Uh, you know, he's not a threat to your authority, Pilate. So, you know, you think, you think Pilate did, wasn't aware that Jesus did miracles? Oh yeah, absolutely he was. Who knows? He might even want to go see him himself in the crowd. You know, I don't know. The Jews answered him, Pilate, we have a law and by our law he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. Well, you know, this guy's doing supernatural miracles. Verse 8, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. Pilate's like, whoa, this guy healed people. Probably. I mean, that's my guess. And here it is. These Jews are jealous of him. And they want to get rid of this guy. Pilate's afraid. Verse 9, And went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Those that delivered Christ to Pilate have a greater sin. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. Pilate sought to release Jesus. Oh, but the churches will say, oh, it's Pilate that killed Jesus. My Bible, my King James Bible, which they hate, there's a reason they don't use it, tells you the truth. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, if thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. You let this guy go, Pilate, we're going to accuse you before Caesar that you are a traitor. So Pilate is now between a rock and a hard place. When Pilate 
therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Yeah, right. 70 AD, uh, they rebelled against Rome, and General Titus brought uh, at least three legions of soldiers and uh, basically leveled Jerusalem and killed them, as many as he could find. Perhaps you could read about Masada. Yeah, Rome had, Rome had had a belly full of these rebellious traitors. We have no king but Caesar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Well, when you hit the lake of fire, you're, it'll be more than just your pants, right? Well, when they do. Then delivered he him, then delivered he him, therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. Now, I believe the Bible, New Testament, was written in Greek. Why? Because why would the Bible say, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha? People will tell you that the Bible, New Testament, was written in Hebrew, but why would it say, And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. If this was in Hebrew, it wouldn't say that, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. It would just say Golgotha. And if you read Hebrew, you would know what it meant. But no, it, it's telling you. In the Hebrew, it's called Golgotha. Golgotha. Why? Because this was written in Greek. not Hebrew. In Matthew 21, Jesus, uh, verse 42. Well, no, all right, let's go back. Uh, verse 33. Here another parable. Jesus is telling a parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard. Planted a vineyard. A vineyard was indicative of uh, symbolism of Israel. And he hedged it round about. When you put a hedge around it, you're putting a fence around it to keep out the wild animals from trampling down and eating your stuff, right? And digged a wine press in it and built a tower and led it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. Husbandmen are basically the people that, you know, gather the grapes and process them, right? And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. Now, who are these servants? The prophets, right? That went to Israel. You know, they beat some of them. They killed some of them. They stoned some of them. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. Verse 37. But last of all, he sent unto, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They said unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, 
Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? Now remember, Paul says the stone and that rock was Christ. If, you're, if your faith is not built on the rock, the stone that the builders rejected, they want to build the kingdom of this world. Christ doesn't want a kingdom of this world. The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Um, the cornerstone is the first thing that you lay out when you're building a house. And if it's off, if it's not what they call square, if it's off, the whole building is going to be out of, it's going to be messed up. You want everything to be perfectly lined up. So the, the cornerstone is very important because if it's wrong, everything's wrong. The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now, Jesus is talking to the Jews here. Verse 43. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. What nation believed in Jesus? What nation translated and the, the New Testament and spread it all over the world at the, at the time? Greece. The book of Ephesians was Ephesus, Greece. Corinthians, Corinth, Greece. Thessalonians, Thessalonica, a city in Greece. Paul went all over Greece and established cities, uh, churches and cities. The New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew, not Aramaic. When you hear that crap, along with that Yeshua garbage, you'll know you're talking to an antichrist. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. The Greek church was the most persecuted church in the history of the world. They spread the gospel all over Eastern Europe. You ever heard of the Russian Orthodox Church or the Greek Orthodox Church? Yeah. Or the Eastern Orthodox Church? Yeah. And sadly, Rome departed from the faith and they spread their whatever religion to the Western Europe until somebody like Martin Luther and a few others, Zwingli and Calvin and a few others, uh, John Knox and a few other pillars of the faith, uh, Decided to rock the boat, I guess you could say. So, all right. So, John 19, verse 17. And he, Jesus, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. John 19, 18. Where they had crucified him and two other with him on either side, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, Jerusalem. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. So Pilate wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, written in Hebrew for the people of Jerusalem that knew Hebrew, and Greek, which was the universal language of the Middle East at the time, because Alexander the Great, a Macedonian Greek, had conquered that area of the world. And Latin, because that was the uh, language of Rome, who had only recently conquered uh, the area. So if you wanted to do business in the Middle East, you better know Greek, because you'd had to. 
Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be filled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture did they cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. I believe this was John, if I read that in the uh, I think it's John. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. It is finished. Uh, the Hebrew roots heretics will tell you that it's not a new covenant. It's a renewed, R-E-N-E-W-E-D. You know, they're going to take the old covenant and make it new. No. They want you to keep the law. The law that you, our people couldn't keep from the beginning. No. I would rather have faith in Christ than trying to keep all these laws. But the Hebrew Roots people want you to go back to the law and go listen to rabbis, you know, the same people that killed Jesus. But they, you know, they don't want to call him Jesus. They want to call him Yeshua because Yeshu is a curse. Believe it or not, Yeshu, Y-E-S-H-U, means may his name be blotted out from under heaven. Yeah, they hate the name Jesus. They hate it. Jesus said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Jesus is dead. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with him, but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers, pay attention here, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Now, when you die, the blood and the water separate because the heart's not pumping mixing the blood and the water. But when you die, the blood is heavier than the water and will sink. Well, it'll separate. So here it is when they took a spear and pierced the side, blood comes out and water separated. Jesus said he was the water of life. Now remember, the blood was... To, uh, symbolic of the grapes you know he said drink of my blood and the water was the wash away sins right what did john the baptist do he uh baptized people in water for the remission of sins uh well for repentance but water doesn't wash away sin the blood of jesus does but it was symbolic so Water and blood. Think about it. And that, people, is how you make it into the kingdom when the kingdom eventually comes. Right now, we're living in... Um, 
Well, we'll cover this probably in part three. Uh, Satan's th right now. This is Satan's kingdom. I somehow suspect that the Lord made a bet with Satan about this world. Uh, we covered some of that in some a previous study I did. I think it was in the thing I oh, I'd have to look it up. But uh, if you read Job chapter one. Satan made a bet with the Lord that he could get uh, Job to curse him if he were to afflict him. And uh, God won that bet. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I'm using human terms to, you know. But uh, Satan challenged, I should say challenged instead of bet, but Satan challenged God that uh, he could get if, if he was allowed to afflict Job, he could get him to curse God and didn't happen. So I wonder if the, Satan had challenged the Lord that if he had control of the earth, he could get everybody to not follow the Lord and follow Satan instead. That's kind of how I believe what happened, but I don't know. Is there a clear verse that teaches that? I'm not sure. If there is one, I don't know where it is. If somebody does know where it is, please put it in the comments. So, um, and by the way, people, I am on BitChute for now. I am on Odyssey, and I am on Rumble. And like I said, YouTube gave me another strike. I am unable to put anything new on YouTube. I am not going to do it because I want to keep the channel up as long as possible. If you want a copy of my work, while I'm still on social media, send me a drive. If you're in the United States, you can send me a USB drive, at least 128 gig. Please, a version, 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 not a virgin. Well, a new one would be good. Uh, version, V-E-R-S-I-O-N, 3.1 or better. Please don't send me a version 2 or a version 3. I mean, it takes me... 30, 40, 50 minutes to copy a drive with the fast drive. People send me a version two because they want to save three or four bucks. It's taken seven or eight hours to copy all this stuff. I mean, come on, really? You know, I can't do anything on my computer for seven or eight hours because you want to save four or five dollars. Really? Come on. But, uh, you know, but if you're overseas, send me an SD card if you can use it. If you can't, well, then USB drive would be all right. But an SD card's better. At least 128 gig. Fastest that you can do it. Because I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on socialist media. All right, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker. All glory, praise, and honor to Jesus. In his precious name. Amen.